Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Tools Day. Yes, I know it has seemed like an eternity for all of you, but I can promise you not as long as it seems like I've waited for today's Tools Day tool. So let's get into it. Can you guys believe that it is finally here? The Milwaukee cordless framer. I feel like we found out about this like a year ago. And I think that's because it was about a year ago that we went to MPS in 2019, the new product symposium from Milwaukee. They introduced the world to the cordless framing nailer. And I finally got one in the mail a day or two ago. I will say you guys have already seen me. I mean, I've been rocking the Hitachi now now it's Metabo HPT Framer for, I think, two and a half years at least. And it's a great, great gun. And I think that is a good thing to compare this new Milwaukee to because this is the one I use every day. It's the one I'm comfortable with. I know everything about it. And it's performed flawlessly for us for those last two and a half, three years. But we're here to talk about the Milwaukee Framer. I know so many people have reached out to me and said, Kyle, when are you getting the framer? Please, when you get it, make a video, tell us what you think because we need something. We're tired of gas with pads load or we're tired of the crappy DeWalt nailer, which yeah, I, I don't blame you. That thing was a piece of garbage in my opinion, but this is the new 30 degree Milwaukee framing nailer. This is gonna be obviously used with the M18 platform that everybody has been using for years. Milwaukee has consistently stuck with that, which is awesome. It has probably one of the coolest things I'm just gonna jump right into. It has the ability for an extended magazine for two clips and nails at once. I will show you that, and actually I'm gonna install it here in this video, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. They're claiming that in bump fire mode, you can spit out three nails every second. It kind of takes away the myth that a battery framer is not gonna be able to keep up with a pneumatic. I've already used this. You guys maybe remember MPS a year ago when I did that video, and if you didn't, check out the link right here and you can go watch that video. Maybe you'll see some other cool tools that haven't made it uh, out yet. I think most of them have, but anyway, this thing fires rapid fire fast enough. Uh, you can see it's got a very aggressive tip on it, so toe nailing shouldn't be a problem. Obviously, we've got adjustable depth of drive, the cool thing about this also, you guys remember the Hitachi, this guy right here. Like, I, I don't know what the point of this was. I rarely find it useful to have such a big rafter hook, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, this is my secondary gun. My first, I got two of these. So my first Metabo, I switched this rafter hook out for the smaller one and that works really great. But Milwaukee, they came out with this and it has a very, I think adequate sized rafter hook, not too tight like the DeWalt and not too large like the Hitachi Metabo HPT, but they also threw in this belt clip. So you can stick it on your belt, it's nice and comfortable, always ready to unholster, right? You can take it off if you don't think you're gonna use it, or you could even take off the rafter hook if that's you know not your thing. But for me, we're always climbing around. I'm gonna leave both on because I think that's just Awesome. Now, another thing that you're gonna notice right away is the size of this. Yes, it's heavy compared to a pneumatic, but I think not having a, a hose attached to it, always pulling and getting caught, you know, you're gonna have a sacrifice and that is weight. But there's a huge difference between, you know, the cylinder or the head size of these two guns. I would say in general, the weight, this isn't lighter. If anything, it could be a few ounces heavier. I don't know, I don't have those logistics in front of me or those statistics, sorry. What else do we have on this? Oh yes, this is another key feature that I think Milwaukee hit the, hit the head on the nail, um, is the location of their control panel. So we do have our on off button, we've got our selectable mode button, so you can either do your contact fire, which means you have to depress the trigger before you pull or depress uh, the tip 
before you pull the trigger or you have your sequential bump fire, which means you pull the trigger and you're gonna shoot out three nails per second. It's one thing that I never liked about the Metabo was the location of the controls. You could never, you know, if the sun was out, you couldn't see if you turned it on or whatever. So that's a, a great, I think, upgrade from the Metabo to the Milwaukee. Other than that, man, it's a nail gun. It's cordless. You're gonna spend either 350 to 450, depending if you're just buying the tool or if you're buying the entire kit, which comes with a five amp hour battery. And the extended magazine that I'm gonna show you is another $70. Let me grab that. So here's the extended magazine. I haven't even opened it yet. Figured I'd do that with you guys here for the first time. Because let's be honest, that is another thing that stunk about this or any cordless gun is it goes through a clip of nails really quickly. Well, now you'll be able to put two full clips in and uh, go about your business. So I think we're gonna go ahead and just swap that out real quickly because I just want that on and I think that's how I will always use this. So there's no sense in really getting used to it with just a single clip. All right, so this is a pretty simple change. I've not done it, but I'm a, it looks identical to the Hitachi Metabo. We got a couple bolts here and a bolt here in the magazine, and I find that the Milwaukee has the exact same thing. I don't know what that's for. Maybe that's the extended magazine spot. No? Huh. Maybe a future, a future attachment of, I don't, I don't know. Or can this be changed to a 21 degree with just the change of your magazine? If that is the case, that is amazing because, you know, the big deal or the big difference that I have between a 30 degree and a 21 degree is the nail head. So these are offset, usually clipped nails. This is a, this is a full round offset nail. And when you go to a 21 degree, you have to go to the collated plastic nails. They're a little bit more of a pain, but they have a full round head centered. So sometimes code differentiates what nail you can use. A lot of Southern states are 21 degree, but I think that if they made it able to just switch the magazine, that would be pretty cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and keep going. Let's get this guy installed. Okay, now you can see the difference between a real magazine and this little one that is, I swear to God, the saying on my job site, me and Greg are always saying, it never fails, I'm out of nails. Because every time I'm going to nail a key part of a build and I'm holding it precariously in a position that is awkward and I go to nail it, I'm out of nails. Now that's still gonna happen, but it should happen half as much. So anyway, enough talking, okay? I don't think there's really a whole lot more to say about this. You guys probably wanna see it fire. You wanna see it shoot three seconds or three nails per second. Uh, one more thing actually I will say, one second, is it also comes with this tip. It's a nice little plastic non-marring tip, which as you can see, it takes away the aggressive tip that is, is with it. You got these really aggressive teeth and you can slide this over so maybe if you're doing something like, I don't know, maybe maybe we're gonna use this if, if you're using a 21 degree for something where you don't want all of those dimples in the material, you just want that nail set perfectly, that is what this would be uh, used for. I don't know that I'll use it a ton, but it does come with your gun. So let's, uh, let's get a battery in this thing and get some material and start shooting some nails. Before we get crazy firing nail guns, let's throw our safety protection on. Obviously, you guys have seen me use these isotunes. Super comfortable, stored in this case, kind of like an AirPod or whatever, but these have a noise reduction rating, so that's why I use them. And they just paired with my phone, so hopefully nobody calls me. Oh yeah, and if you want to try these out, I do have a code, and like all good YouTubers, I'm gonna drop that down below in the description, and there'll be a link for you if you're interested. We're gonna go ahead and fire some standard three inch I guess what I would call a common slick. Nothing special, no ring shank, not overly large, and oh, it feels so good to put two clips in at one time. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Hold the button for a second. You'll see the light turn green. We got a white light on our single mode, which we'll go ahead and shoot that first. In order for that to work, uh, you can't pull the trigger and go. You have to push down, then pull the trigger. And oh man, that feels really good. Man, I bet all of you out there that are DeWalt framing nailer users are thinking, wow, that was, that was super quiet. I didn't have to ramp up my nailer and there's not this crazy flywheel making noise after you're done. Let's do that again. Yeah, zero ramp up time, one shot, and just the noise of that gun firing that nail, very similar actually to the Hitachi, and that's why I love it too, is uh, no ramp up time. It just goes and fires. Now let's go ahead, change it. So now we should be able to put our finger on the trigger, pull it, and whenever this tip is depressed, it's gonna fire. So let's, let's just see. Okay. Now Milwaukee's claiming three nails per second. I don't even know that I would need to nail that fast, hardly ever, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. Okay, did you count them? I didn't, but holy cow, this is just cedar and I, I'm using it just really for the surface area so that uh, I had enough area to pop a bunch of nails. It's soft. We'll get into some harder woods later. Let's throw in some ring shank nails. Come on. Okay, first we've got just some three inch ring shanks. Let's go ahead and just shoot a couple of them. Okay, we got one sitting out. I think that was my fault, if I'm being honest. Because look at that, I just fired it directly into that knot and it sunk it in, no problem. My problem was there is a, I don't know, it's like a, a timing, so you can't just go crazy. Actually, I'm out of nails. But you can kind of feel the, the motor working and how it's supposed to, the timing of how it's supposed to work. Do you hear that? It's kind of like a, it's kind of a feeling, I guess, but you can't just, because the timing is off. And I don't know what carpenter is ever gonna nail like that. So I don't think that's a big deal. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and throw in some three and a halfs because this says it will drive three and a halfs and these are three and a half inch ring shanks. Literally the exact same depth. Now it's time to get some harder wood other than cedar. All right, there we go. We've got our oak. This is pallet oak, super hard, dense wood. It's not like the hardest. I mean, I think a lot of guys are gonna wanna see maybe how it performs in LVL, double LSL, whatever, that engineered lumber. Maybe I'll have to do that on site because I don't, I don't have any, but we've got our three and a half inch ring shank nails and let's just see, let's see what happens. So it didn't go in. That's pretty disappointing. Not even close. Nope, doesn't go in. Now let's try the Hitachi. Okay, same thing. Like I said, this is dense oak. I knew it wasn't gonna go probably no issue in. I did expect it to go a little bit further. Let's try some three inch ring shanks before we work our way down to some slicks, which I know will, should go in. Okay. And now for some three inch slicks. So there you go. 
you're not going to drive these into hard oak three and a half inch ring shanks but uh, honestly i didn't expect it to be perfect but i expected it to go a little bit better than that but that tells you that this test is not set up for success this is showing you real life if you're if you're going to be nailing into pallet wood probably don't use three and a half inch ring shanks but if you do have to connect some oak framing you should be fine with some standard three inch slicks yeah All right, so the next little demo we're gonna do is kind of simulating a 16 inch on center stud wall and toe nailing some stud because I know that is a, a, that's a problem with the DeWalt nailer specifically. The Hitachi, you can do it, but it does have a somewhat restricted, what I find toe nail ability. And one thing that I think they fixed here on the Milwaukee, it's a much more aggressive tip and it's a lot, it's a lot longer. So you could probably see the difference there. So let's go ahead and just, we're just gonna real quickly here, just kind of showcase. I mean, zero issues there. Setting those toenails just perfect. And you'll see that there's plenty of room. You can even get completely in between a stud bay no issues left and right grabs the material and you can do a good job there so good job milwaukee on that and while i'm here let's go ahead and i'll throw this tip on just to kind of showcase the difference first i'll just pop a couple nails here and you'll see the tip where it digs into the material not where the nail is but where the tip is let me, uh, let me be safe here and pull the battery out. Otherwise, I know someone out there is going to remind me of my lack of safety. And you should. I appreciate that. Okay. So that's all that is. Turn it back on. And boom. You still have the same speed. However, it does leave a little bit of a mark, but it's not going to dig in and uh, ruin your material and you can be a lot more careful so that's nice easy to just hopefully it's easy i don't know i should say it's easy until i do it looks like that tip wasn't coming off very easily or i'm just weak i think i already talked about it but you do have adjustable depth here like most nail guns i probably if i was using it in this material i would adjust it because it's sinking them in pretty hardcore i just don't know what else there is to say about this gun guys so many people have been including me waiting for a long time for milwaukee to even talk about a framing gun because they had those trim guns some guys liked them but the majority didn't and then milwaukee announced this new line of nailers including uh, i do believe it's a 16 gauge they have no an 18 gauge i don't remember I don't have it, uh, but they have a crown stapler, which I now have, and the framing nailers, and they work amazing. So good on Milwaukee for going back and listening to the problems and not just rushing to market a tool that had a need, but waiting, developing, and coming out with, I think, a great tool. They could reduce the weight. It's definitely heavy, but it's not out of its class. Every other you know, cordless battery powered framers the same way but once you have this you're never going to worry about gas one thing i will say is that i've had this nailer for i do believe it's almost three years since they came out with it i got this nailer before it was even on the the shelf so it was early on and just this winter i sent it in for service because it was not firing as well because there's a, a, a sealed cylinder in here with some gas. I do believe that the Milwaukee is very similar. So I'm assuming that after a couple years of hard use, I'll have to service this. It's no different than any other nailer. And Milwaukee has good service, just like Hitachi, Matabo, whatever. So I'm not too worried about that. I love the fact that I don't have to buy gas repetitively. I don't ever have to change out gas because it never fails. You're always out of it when you need it and uh, it works with all my other Milwaukee tools. So I'm gonna say good job Milwaukee, but like always, 
I need to get this out on site. I need to use it a lot more in long term before I really feel good about saying, go sell all your other nailers and buy a Milwaukee. This is proven. I've used it for multiple years and had great, great luck with it. Shot thousands of nails. But I do believe that this is probably gonna be a pretty, pretty sought after tool for a lot of framer sites because it fires just as fast as any pneumatic you're ever gonna need. It's gonna perform as well. I ain't worried that it didn't fire those three and a half inch nails into the oak because I don't do that. I like the rafter hook. There's just a lot of good about it. But like always, go check me out on Instagram at RR Buildings and I will be using this out on site more in depth. I'll give you my, my real feel as I develop them and as I learn more about this nailer. Maybe I'll throw a link down to Acme Tool or something. If you've been waiting for a long time like most people, go check it out and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks a lot. I am in the single fire mode right now, which doesn't do anything until you pull the trigger. Okay, that was a botch. My bad. I'm just gonna start that over, okay? <laughs>